I've taken from the streets of the Bronx to this moment on Hollywood Boulevard. And this all feels, I don't know, kind of surreal. I just wanted to be good at what I did. I wanted to be a great actress. I wanted to be a great singer. I wanted to be a great performer to share the joy of entertaining you. This is Hollywood with the mecca of entertainment around the world. It all starts right here. This is what it all comes down to. It all comes down to your family and working hard to love and protect and do everything that you can to make your family and the ones you love their lives better. It's thrilling to have Anna Mae Wong, the first Asian American actress as my neighbor. We could actually start our own little Chinatown right here. <laughs> I think about what a star is, and I think about a star being liked for so many people. A star you can always see, even in darkness. So my hope is that anyone in this town whose dreams may be on life support, I want you to walk past this star in particular and know that I've been there. This one in particular is for the underdogs. It's an incredible day. I'm trying to soak it all in. Here's the thing about these Hollywood stars. They're permanent. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Well, we get to see this star every day on the corner of Hollywood and Argyle. Lo único que les puedo decir es que siempre recuerden que trabajando mucho, sin descansar y respetándose uno mismo y respetando a los demás, se pueden lograr cosas que uno nunca se soñó. Gracias a todos mis fans por estar aquí y un beso a Colombia y a todos los colombianos que están aquí. Gracias por venir. I feel like a lot of people probably only ever thought I'd make it to the Walk of Shame, but here I am. Today for me is a celebration of something that my dad taught me and that is, to thine own self be true. And if you walk along this boulevard and you look at these names, there is a power that lies in that. There's a power in believing in yourself. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rana Gadban, President and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, which is presenting this program. Welcome to today's virtual Walk of Fame ceremony. Before we start, we would like to give special thanks to our media partner, Variety, who is co-producing this ceremony with us. We're so excited to be here with you today to present this program. And though we miss seeing everyone's faces on Hollywood Boulevard, we're happy to connect with you to honor one of the most versatile actors of our generation, a performer that is equally comfortable on screen and on stage. Today, Hollywood honors Jimmy Smith with a 2,696 star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, let's take a look back at some of the highlights of his incredible career. Very good, you have the right to remain silent. Now what else? What else? <laughs> Anything I say may be used against me in a court of law. That's two, you're doing great. Must leave this place. Don't stay here, my son. I am not your son! Are you the conky repairman? I'm your authorized conky repairman. Ooh, authorized. Come on in. Detective Simone, that's with Anith, shield number 3118. He was trying to reach out there at the end tour, you know? He's trying to reach out. He was, he was just some kid in there trying to reach out to his mom.
you know, I find myself on days like this casting about for someone to blame. I remember as a young man listening on the radio to Dr. King in 1968. He asked of us compassion and we responded, not necessarily because we felt it, but because he convinced us that if we could find compassion, if we could express compassion, and if we could just pretend compassion, it would heal us. And so I ask you today to dig down deep with me and find that compassion in your heart because it will keep us on the road and we will walk together and work together and slowly, slowly, too slowly, things will get better. God bless you. My daddy, uh, he pulled me out of high school so that I could work on the same farm as him, making the same pennies. I thought to myself, no, 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 papi, that don't make no sense. I'm gonna drop out so somebody else could get richer for my work. So I came here. So I could make my own damn work. Jimmy, what an iconic career you've had. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce administers the Walk of Fame on behalf of the city of Los Angeles. And now I would love to turn it over to our Los Angeles City Council member, Mitchell Farrell, to present you with a beautiful resolution on behalf of our city. Hello, I'm Mitch O'Farrell, Los Angeles City Council member representing the 13th District and the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I am proud to join the celebration from City Hall in downtown Los Angeles. I'd like to thank the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce for administering the Walk of Fame on behalf of the City of Los Angeles and for putting on today's virtual ceremony. Today, we're recognizing someone that has been a fixture in our lives for over 35 years, Jimmy Smits. On TV, you have embodied some of the most iconic characters of our lifetime. However, your TV work has only been a part of your journey. You have starred in many feature films on the big screen and countless stage performances. Along the way, you've always used your voice to help amplify causes you believe in. Your work with the National Hispanic Foundation for the Arts to assist in lifting voices in the performing arts will have a lasting impact for generations to come. And that is one of the many reasons you belong here on this historic Walk of Fame. So on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, I wanna congratulate Jimmy Smits for an amazing career and welcome you to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Thank you so much, council member. And now, before we hear from Jimmy, we have two guest speakers who would like to say a few words about our honoree. Our first speaker is a preeminent force in television entertainment. He has directed close to 200 episodes of television and was active as a director and producer for series including Station 19, Pitch, Sons of Anarchy, In Treatment, Cold Case, City of Angels, and NYPD Blue. Please welcome Paris Barclay. Hello, I'm Paris Barclay and I am privileged and very proud to add my voice to the people congratulating Jimmy Smits on his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, I'm gonna do this under protest because I don't believe Jimmy should get a star on the famed walk. I think he should get a heart, and I mean that. I think Jimmy Smits is all heart, and rather than having a star, which I think is certainly attractive, a heart would be even better. Because everything that he does, and I've known him for 30 years, has been infused with the heart and the soul of a man who cares not just about the characters that he's portraying, but about life and about what it all means and about whether or not each of these roles contributes to society. That's the Jimmy I know. That's the Jimmy that's full of heart. And one of the things I love most about him is uh, readily apparent in the episode of NYPD Blue that I directed that uh, uh, 
Jimmy's character, Bobby Simone, passed away. And that was all about the failure of his heart. And that was very difficult for Jimmy Smith, not just because of the physical nature of it, but because a man who was so driven by passion and caring and heart, losing that power took him to a very, very dark place. And when we finished the final scene in which he actually passed away and one tear escaped from his eye, and that was not directed, that was just Jimmy Smith's. The uh, entire crew broke out in a continuous and tumultuous applause. That was because they loved Jimmy Smith's, as do I. I've worked with him on three different series, and I know this man, who is all heart, deserves a heart on the Walk of Fame. And, and just finally, if, if there's something to be said for passion, it comes through again and in the heights. I just watched it this weekend with my family, and again, that full Jimmy Smith's that I know is on display. It's a beautiful movie. It's a great role for Jimmy. It's an honor to cap this career with something as extraordinary as that. So I thank all of the creators behind it, but mostly I thank the man of the hour, Jimmy Smith. Congratulations for bringing the heart in all of the work that you do and for making me uh, just another person who gets to flop along with you on your wings. Thank you, Jimmy. Congratulations. Thank you, Paris. Next up, we have an award-winning composer, lyricist, and actor. He is the creator and original star of Broadway's Tony-winning musicals, Hamilton and In the Heights. Please welcome Walk of Famer, Lynn manuel Miranda. How do you make a way when there is no way? How do you create a legacy? The first step is to be so good at your job that you are simply undeniable. And Jimmy Smith is that good at his job. Um, the legacy part comes when he plays Victor Cifuentes on LA Law, then goes on to be Bobby Simone on NYPD Blue, then goes on to be the first Latino president of the Bull Advocate for Latino artists. I remember when he came to see In the Heights, Off-Broadway, way back in 2007 when we were playing a theater. No Congratulations, Jimmy Smith. Your talent is only matched by your incredible humanity and your enormous heart. I love you. Congratulations on this long overdue and a well-deserved honor. Thank you, Lynn. Jimmy, your star will live permanently at 6100 Hollywood Boulevard, right next to your favorite actor and former co-star, Gregory Peck. And you're also near the very historic corner of Hollywood and Gower, where the first Walk of Fame star was placed for director Stanley Kramer. Now, because we couldn't be on the boulevard today, we wanted to do something special. Let's take a look at the making of your star. On behalf of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, 
we now declare today Jimmy Smith's day in Hollywood. It's now time to hear from our honoree. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our newest Walk of Famer, Jimmy Smits. Thanks so much to the Hollywood Chamber for this uh, tremendous honor. With respect, I am always going to think of myself as a journeyman actor who prizes working through an ensemble above all else. But uh, this is pretty mind-blowing stuff. I guess because it carries a permanence that is uh, humbling. In an industry where even mere employment can be uh, so fleeting, this kind of feels like forever. And speaking of humbling, let me take a moment here to thank my brothers Paris Barclay and Lin-Manuel Miranda for the incredible gift of their praise. Ideally, the relationship between an actor and a director is a partnership that you hope will inspire collaboration. And yet sometimes it isn't always harmonious. But there are times where that relationship can connect in spirit and there's a trust that takes over. And then it becomes, tell me where you want me to go. Uh, not just in movie, just tell me where you want me to go and I'll take the risk with you. And that's what I've always had with Paris. Uh, we had it on Blue, we had it on Sons, and a handful of other projects that we worked on together. Uh, Paris would jokingly call me his good luck charm. But having him there, giving me direction throughout my career has been my good fortune. So from an artistic perspective, it has been idyllic. And then there's Lynn. Uh, this young man just consistently wows me. I had a friend who worked at the drama bookshop in New York City, and he told me about this kid and his crew from Wesleyan who were doing readings of this musical down in the basement there, and that they were the real deal. And not long after... My lady Wanda and I sat amazed in an off-Broadway theater watching Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, realizing it was the same project. We looked at each other knowing that we were witnessing the next wave. And of course, it moved on to Broadway. It won multiple awards, lauded. And a few years later, I, I ran into Lin again at that same drama bookstore. And he excitedly told me about this book he had read during vacation about Alexander Hamilton. Uh, the guy that's on the $10 bill, said I. And he's, yeah, he's an immigrant. He's got this great story. And he's just so excited. Cut to the next thing I know, he's spitting rhymes at the White House in front of President Obama and the First Lady. Talk about confirmation from the outside. Genius! The man's a genius. God bless him that he has made such an extraordinary art that has transformed theater. And I am I'm nothing short of thrilled to be part of the movie version of In the Heights that's finally going to hit theaters soon. We are all eager to finally begin reopening a lockdown world. And what better way than with a film that we are hoping will feel like a rainbow after a thunderstorm. I even get to blow a few notes and I dance a couple of steps, which check off the bucket list box. But it reminds me of being back home in Brooklyn as a little kid, doing impressions in our living room in front of my dad and his poker playing pals. I would put on my dad's coat and hat and pretend that I was Nikita Khrushchev banging his shoe on, on the desk at the UN. I would imitate Ed Sullivan introducing the Beatles and would grab a wig and sing, I want to hold your hand. It would have been impossible for my family to conceive that one day their boy would have his face inside that same small screen that they watched in our living room every night, let alone the big screen. I feel blessed to have had an opportunity to work in 
our different mediums in our industry with some amazingly talented folks. And none were bigger than uh, Gregory Peck, who I had the privilege to appear with along with Jane Fonda in the feature of Old Gringo in 1989. Um, uh, besides being in awe of him on so many levels, Gregory imparted wisdom about life as an artist and the, the responsibility that comes with it as we sat there talking in the deserts of Mexico. I guess he validated for me what I had been feeling and what it meant to be for me as an artist and how to use the platform, helping me to, uh, to set me on the right path. And he treated me as an equal. And that is why today's tribute is even more significant because I've, I've been granted a spot in close proximity to Gregory Peck's star. And I honestly cannot imagine a bigger honor. My goal as an actor has been to uh, interpret and, and to bring to life fully rounded characters with uh, thought provoking stories, hopefully that reflect the American experience. So does it matter that I'm Hispanic, Latino, Latinx? You bet it does. Um, my heritage informs all my characters, no matter who they are. And believe me, I'm very proud to be someone who continues in the tradition of actors like Jose Ferrer, Anthony Quinn, Rita Moreno, Raul Julia. I think that what's driven me from the beginning of my professional career through this day is an ongoing uh, visualization and a realization of a dream. In the Heights is a story about dreams. It's a musical about joy, about never giving up, about overcoming the odds. And it focuses on something to which so many can relate, the hope of a better life. I've been unbelievably fortunate in so many ways, not just in my work life, but in the family that I've had surrounding me and supporting me on every step of this journey. I'm talking about my life partner, Juan de Jesus, who is part of every role that I've done. Um, I'm talking about my daughter, Taina, and my son, Kino, who have uh, been through the roller coaster ride of this industry and who bring us happiness every day. I'm talking about my family team in the business who have been so supportive, Tom Hoberman, Carol Marshall, Daniel Sussman. What a blessed man I am. Just a Puerto Rican kid from Brooklyn who, uh, who is determined to follow his dream and chase passion. Today is honestly beyond anything that I could have envisioned. So on behalf of journeymen performers and overachievers everywhere, uh, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. We proudly welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Jimmy Smith's Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Woo. <laughs>
Gregory Peck is uh, really overwhelming. And uh, Hollywood and Gower, <laughs> Hollywood and Gower means a lot just because I've done a lot of work over at the Sunset Gower Studios and the Hollywood sign is right there and it's at the beginning of what the industry is. It's about the work, you know. But I want to thank everybody at the uh, Hollywood Chamber and of course my family. I couldn't have, I wouldn't be here without them. Thank you all for attending today's ceremony. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Once upon a time, in a faraway land called Washington Heights. Say it so it doesn't disappear. Washington Heights. Lights up on Washington Heights up at the break of day. I wake up and I got this little punk I gotta chase away. Pop the grape at the crack of dawn, sing while I wipe down the awning. Hey, y'all, uh, good morning. Ice cold piragua, cherry, strawberry, and just for today, I got my mate. It's a story of a block that was disappearing. The genius is back! Yo, here's your chance, ask her out right now. Hey! There's something on your shirt. Operate We all had a sueñito, and when it came to dreams, we had to keep scraping by. Maybe this neighborhood is changing forever. Maybe tonight is our last night together, however. I just want to see the whole world through her eyes. They're talking about kicking out all the dreamers. It's time to make some noise. We had to assert our dignity in small ways. Little details that tell the world we are not invisible. This is the moment when you do better than me. Because you can see a future that I can. But we go, we rap for people, let it be go! You made all of this? This is me. They used to say, if you work hard, if you live by the rules, the money will come. The things will come. You ready? I've been saving up all my pennies in my piggy bank for this day. Today's all we got, so we cannot stop. This is our block. In the heights, I hang my flag on this land. Cheers. It reminds me that I hang my miles away. This is crazy. In the heights, the best days of my life. And I built my little dream, my sueñito. In the heights, the late night soup tastes beans. Here. Washington Heights. I'm on the street light.